we're going to start. We we'll start standing. So you all familiar with yin yoga, obviously. So we're actually going to start a little bit differently today with a little bit of uh, continuous movement. So just close your eyes and allow your body to just sway and move from side to side, just feeling into the parts of you that are tight, that need to move, that you haven't moved all day. So if you need to move one shoulder back or forward, bend one knee or the other. That's right, whichever part you need to move, whether you need to raise your arms, turn your hands in and out, whatever part that you need to start with. We're going to do that for the first minute. And just let your whole body find the bits that you need to work on. And allow yourself to really relish moving. Really relish the sensation of being in your body. And revel and just your breath and the music as you move. Okay, so we're slowly going to start coming back to stillness. And lift our arms up at shoulder height and just move your arms from one side, just extending, bringing movement. And then come back to center. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. You can probably see it in the mirror if you can see my shoulder blades, what's happening. And then exhale, release. Inhale, lift your right arm up and slide your left arm down. Lift your ribs up to the sky, turning them up. Firm through the core and lean down. Exhale and return to center. Inhale, lift your left arm up and then lean over. Exhale, release. Lift up as you inhale through the heart. On the exhale, lean further down. Inhale and return. You're feeling really stiff through the side? Yeah. So you just lift the arm and let gravity work. Don't try and go further. So at no point pull yourself into anything. So we're going to find your limits. I don't believe in pushing you, pulling you, or putting you into a position that's beyond your limit. So please let me know when you've reached it, and we'll check again. And we'll do a little bit of movement twisting. So lift your arms at shoulder height, and just turn from side to side, slowing down to the rhythm of your breath. And start slowing your breath down. Lengthen your inhale and just lengthen the exhale even more than the inhale. So you start feeling the movement. And slowly come back to stillness. Release your hands. Interlace your hands in front of you. Push your palms away from you and lift your arms to the sky. Exhale, soften your shoulder blades down your back. Lift your toes. Activate your quads firm through the core. And on the next exhale, release your hands. Interlace your fingers behind you. Keep your toes active. Slide your hands past your tailbone. And lift up through the heart. Exhale, soften through the heart. Extend down through the tailbone. Keep those thighs active. Inhale, lift the heart, and on the next exhale, release your hands, keep your toes lifted. Inhale, lift your arms again, interlace them and flip your palms to the sky. Exhale, lower the toes and grip the ground. Keep your thighs active, keep your core active. And on the exhale, release your hands and slowly hinge forward. Bend your knees as much as you need to, to lower your head and shoulders and touch the ground. And we're going to be here for about a minute. So if you want to, you can bend your knees deeply so you can rest your chest onto your thighs. Check that your feet are directly below your hip sockets. And take a sustainable position in your forward fold. 
something that you can hold for the next minute. Turn your head from side to side to just allow your head to hang forward, your shoulders to hang forward. And then slowly allow your head to come to stillness. Lift your toes, activating through the thighs, but keep your knees bent. And on the exhale, lower your toes back down and grip the ground, keeping your knees bent. On the next inhale, slide your hands up your shins and extend forward. Roll your thighs in and back. Extend out through the crown of the head. Exhale and lower back down. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins and extend forward. Exhale and lower back down. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins and extend forward. Keep your knees bent if your back is rounding. So if you feel like your glutes or your back is really rounded, bend your knees really deeply so you can extend out through the spine. Exhale and lower back down. On your next inhale, bring your hands to your hips, squeeze your legs into the middle and slowly with your, a long spine, come and stand up, release your arms. Wonderful, open your legs wide, about a meter wide, roll your thighs in and back, so as wide as possible. Squeeze your legs into the middle, lift up through the heart, firm through the core and hinge forward halfway. So, Open your legs as wide as you need so your fingertips can reach the ground. Squeeze your legs into the middle, roll your thighs in and back. And once you're really secure and your legs are really strong, they're the only part of you that's going to be active. And allow your whole body to hinge forward and relax from the waist up. So from your hip crease to your head, you're relaxed. But from the hip crease to your feet, your legs are active and strong. So lift your toes, roll your thighs in and back and push the ground with both feet. Beautiful. And we're here for about two minutes. To make it sustainable, make sure that you're squeezing the legs into the middle and rolling your thighs in and back and that your weight is equally distributed between your heels and the ball of your feet. On the next inhale, come up halfway. Walk your hands over to the left and grab your left shin or left thigh. Turn your heart to face your knee and draw your, yourself towards your leg. That's it. Wonderful. And we're going to be here for about two minutes. So make sure this is a sustainable position for you. Make sure that your hips are centered, that your weight is equally distributed between your feet.
check that your legs are both extended. So if to get to your leg, you're bending the knee, come up higher and just grab your thigh. So the important part is that you're turning and that both legs have extended. Lower your fingertips to the ground, come back to center and extend forward, coming up halfway. Walk your hands over to the right. Hold on to your right shin or right thigh and turn your heart to face your knee and draw yourself towards your leg, only as far as you can go. No one, don't try and bring yourself too close. So if your leg is bending, come up higher. Or you don't have to draw yourself as tightly towards it. So long as you're feeling it in your glutes, that's all that you need to know. You don't have to try and look like anyone else around you. Press down through the outside of each foot, through the outer edge of the foot, and press down through the ball of the foot. Make sure that the weight's equally distributed. On the inhale, walk your hands back to center, come up halfway, and then heel to your feet closer in. Bring your hands to your hips, firm through the core, and then slowly stand up, release your arms. And we're gonna walk in place so you get your circulation back. How does that feel? <laughs> Intense? Yeah. How do you feel? Okay. So we're just gonna walk in place. How about you? <laughs> I keep asking everyone else and I never ask you. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna to come to the top of the mat. Make sure that your blocks are at the front. And then step your right foot back behind you coming into a lunge. So make sure that you can hold up that both blocks are parallel to the front foot. And we're going to start just by extending the front leg first and then bending it really slowly with the rhythm of your breath. So as you inhale, extend your front leg, keep your hips in place. So the hips are not what's moving you. What's moving you is the bending of the knee. And your back foot has your heel lifted. So you're in a full lunge. So bend the front knee coming into a full lunge and as you exhale, extend. Inhale, bend the front knee. Exhale, extend. Inhale, bend your front knee. Exhale, extend. On the next inhale, come to the lunge and lower your back knee to the ground. And you can start by slowly sliding forward until you've got your front knee forward of your foot and you can walk your blocks forward. And we're going to hold that. So if you need support under your knee, grab a knee pad, place it underneath your knee because you're going to be here two minutes. So <laughs> I, would, I would advise the knee pad. It hurts after about 30 seconds simply because you're on bone. So the important part is that you're on your thigh bone, not on your kneecap. Either way, it will hurt because you're on bone. So that's why you want your knee pad. I'm going to give you one. There you go. And I'll give you your knee pad as well, even though you're fully padded. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we're here for another two minutes.
And the important part here is that you keep the front heel down. That's it. If you lift that heel, you won't actually be getting the stretch of the calf. So we're targeting your calf, not your hip flexors. We'll be targeting your hip flexors next. So while you're here, think about the front foot and grip the ground with the front foot so you're lifting up through the arch digging your heel in and when you do that that will actually start to release through the back of the calf and it's just a patience thing right now we've got 30 seconds left to go And the moment you feel you want to get out of it, don't. That's exactly the moment you need to stay there. In yin yoga, your body wants to flee the pose because you're just holding for a very long time. It's more a mind thing than actually a physical thing. Because eventually the sensation will dampen and subside. Okay, on the next inhale, slide your hips back, lift your back knee up, and step forward to the front of the mat, lower head and shoulders. Close your eyes, bend your knees, resting your chest on your thighs. Really bend your knees deeply, so your chest is really on your thighs. And then compare the feeling on your left leg with your right leg. On the next inhale, come up halfway, squeeze your legs into the middle and place your hands on your hips. Exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together and your legs into the middle. Inhale, stand up, release your arms. Wonderful. Now step your left leg back behind you. Grab the blocks, place them on either side of your front foot and come into a full lunge. And once again, inhale and extend the front leg. Exhale and bend the knee. Make sure that you start from a full lunge so that your front knee is directly over your heel and your back heel is lifted and your front knee is fully bent. Yeah, that's it. But it's directly above your heel, not forward of it. So sl slide your foot back and then as you inhale, extend forward. Exhale and bend your knee. And someone's body just cracked. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend your knee. Tell me where it cracked. In the ankle. Actually. In the ankle. Oh, okay. Bend your knee. Okay. Inhale, extend. Exhale and bend. Doing it really slowly with a lot of control so you can Lift up through the arch, squeeze the floor with your foot. And that will give you far more control over the movement. Okay, on the next inhale, come back to a lunge. Move the knee pad over to the left and lower your knee down. You can slide your knee a little bit forward so you can bend your front knee really deeply. Place your blocks at the front. Make sure that your heel is still on the ground. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> keep your back toes tucked. If you keep your back toes tucked, you will know whether you're on your kneecap or on your femur, on your thigh bone. So make sure you're on the thigh bone. The other thing that gives you more control is the back toes help you squeeze your leg back. So in case you want to reduce sensation, you squeeze that. So at this point as well, inhale and grip the ground with your foot as if you're going to make a suction cup out of your foot. 
And once again, we're just here for two minutes. We've already been here for about a minute. And you'll find a spot where the sole of your foot begins to relax. At that same point, press the ball of your foot and the heel at the same time into the ground to activate that foot. Because if you keep it active, you will release through the calf. On the next inhale, slide your hips back until you're in a Half lunge, lift your back knee up and step forward to the front of the mat, lower head and shoulders. Bend the knees, rest your chest onto your thighs. Roll your thighs in and feel whether your legs feel the same or different again. Inhale and come up halfway. Squeeze your legs into the middle as you exhale, placing your hands on your hips. And on the next inhale, stand up, release your arms. Wonderful. Okay, so now open your legs wide again, and this time point your toes out. Bend both knees, and we're going to move first. We're not gonna be here forever. So we're gonna move from side to side, bending your knees really slowly with a lot of control. And once you get your movement under control, you can start moving through your torso. Twisting, moving, finding your balance. So first I want to get all of your joints lubricated before we... <laughs> that really worries me. <laughs> okay. And just move from side to side until your feet are used to the angle at which you're moving and your legs are used to being open and your hips are used to this angle. And then slowly come back to center, lift your chest, come up and extend your legs. Wonderful. So come back to parallel feet and heel toe your feet back to center. So what we're going to do is come down to the ground and use our hips a little bit from seating. So we're going to start holding onto our foot. So you bring it back and extend it forward, back and forward only as far as you can stretch. So if you can't go the whole way, that's okay. Only as far as it moves. And the important part is to move through the hip. So you're not really trying to move just through the knee, you're moving through the whole range in your hip. So it can go sideways, it can go front, it can go sides. It's as if you're trying to get all of the range of movement in there. And then slowly come back to center. If your hand can reach while sitting up, leave it there. Otherwise, grab a strap, hook it around your foot, and hold it with the opposite hand. Yes, this one has to be straight. And then place your right hand behind you. Lift up through the heart, so you're extending through your spine as straight as you can get it. That's it, so your left hand's on the strap and your right hand's on the other side. That's it, opposite hand, lift up through the heart. Make sure that you're lifting up to the heart and as you lean back, your shoulders are in line with your spine. Push your hand, pull your hand back but resist with the strap. So you're just resisting. Don't try and bring it up. You're just resisting the pull. 
And the higher you come with your heart, the more you'll feel it through your glute. You feel it? Okay, that's good. Keep lifting up as high as you can through the heart so that your spine is extended and not curving. And you don't need to raise the leg very high. It's just a matter of you pulling on the strap and resisting. And on the next exhale, release the strap, lower your leg down, and we do the other side. So grab your leg, move it in and out through its range of motion. We're just warming up the joint, really. That's what we're doing, getting into all of your range of movement. Because if we go straight into that pose, your joint's not warm, it's not lubricated. So you'll feel it more in other bits. And then slowly come back to stillness, lift your foot up and then place a strap around it. Grab the strap with your right hand. Place your left hand behind you, lift up through the heart. So your spine is extended, your heart is lifting. It's as if you've got a, like, another strap behind you, lifting you up to the sky. And we're gonna be here for about two minutes. So once again, as you pull, into the strap, resist with your foot. So you're pushing into the strap with your foot as you're pulling. And what this does is it actually takes all the effort out of your back. It brings it onto your leg because your strongest muscles are your leg muscles. And this hand's just for balance. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have any weight on it. It's just there to keep you in place. So I'm gonna come around and give you guys a hand. So I'm gonna place a strap behind you and do what I've been describing with the heart. So I'm gonna lift up, that's it. And you can lower the strap a little. How does that feel? Yep. You feel supported? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Isn't the arm supposed to be stretching the back of my leg? The, the Where are you feeling it? Um, in my core. In your core. So oh, extend the leg stretch. and let your strap get longer. Yeah, that's it. Do you feel it in the leg now? And then if you place your hand further back to give you the support, can you feel it now? more in your core. So if you lift it high, do you feel it now? Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> through there, okay. Not at the back. Not at the back. Oh, interesting, okay. I think probably because I just worked that muscle with the lunge. Oh, probably, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let go now yeah. so everyone else can come off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower your leg down, release the strap. And now we're gonna do the other side. So for this one, you can do two things. One is use the strap, or the other is just use your arms. So there's two ways of using your arms here. So the first one is to wind your left elbow around your right foot and lift your leg up. If you don't reach, you place your elbows here. If you don't reach, we make a sling with our strap. Okay, so the first thing we're going to try is the sling. So just make a loop in your strap. Keep it fairly wide and keep the front here so it's diagonally across your chest. So what's going to happen is you're going to bring your foot across. You're just crossing your leg in a figure four. 
you're holding onto the strap, lifting up, and then you're going to help your foot up and just try and bring your strap away from your neck so that it's on your trap, it's not on your neck. And then just pull on the strap. So make sure that... So basically right now you should be able to hold yourself like that. So I'll come and give you a hand, I think. Yeah, so the strap should be, the other end of the strap should be over this side. So you can pull on it. I think it's too short. Let me just bring it this way. Like that. And then just hold it with this one. And then lift up. And then lift your foot up. Lift that foot higher. And the strap here. And then... So I'm going to bring it over here. That's it. How does that feel? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so you can place one hand behind you because you don't need it anymore. That's it. So that's it. If that's sustainable, great. The other thing, if you're not feeling anything, then you can bring both hands underneath and lift it up. But if you are feeling something, just stay with the strap. So this is going to have a full diagonal stretch through your back. You are going to feel this in your back. If you can't do this, that means that your back is tight. So you just keep, it doesn't, that's not a bad thing. It just means that you don't have the range right now. It's, it's okay. That's why you've got the strap. The other option is this. It's like cradling a baby, but the strap is there in case you can't get there. So you don't have to try and get there, just stay with the strap. So if your joint doesn't want to move in that direction, bring the leg out. So bring it out, then hug it. That's it. Okay. And then slowly release, bring it back down. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and then take the strap off and extend your leg out. So we're gonna do the other side now. So once again, what you do is you place the strap on the opposite side, diagonally. Yeah, the opposite side. I just did exactly the opposite of what I told you to do. And loosen your strap again so that you can adjust it according to whether this leg's tight or not. So cross your leg over, place the strap around it, and if you can loop the strap around your left shoulder, it's better than having it up next to your neck. So try and bring it over the shoulder. And that way you can actually lift the foot up tighten and come back. And what this does is it takes the pressure away from your neck. It shouldn't be on the neck. So I'm going to come and give you, you're, you're good right now. I think you're good as well. Okay, I'm going to give you a hand. I'm going to bring that up. Your right, yeah, then release that leg. Yeah, that's it. This is, this is your pose right now, right there. And I'm just going to move here so that it's over the shoulder. That's it. That's it. And you can actually let go of your foot there and just hold on to the strap here. So that it, bring your arm down. That's it. That's it. That's, and that helps you sit up higher. So you can actually just let your leg go with your hand. The strap's doing the job and you can just support yourself. And I don't think you need the strap. <laughs> Not as much. So we're going to take the strap off and just bring that up. And you can stay where you are. Do not try and look like anyone next to you. 
So everyone's got their own limitation, and one side's always going to be tighter than the other side. For example, you can probably have more tightness on the other side than on this one. And for me, it's always one side's tighter than the other one. And we're almost there. We've got 20 seconds left to go. So this is instead of pigeon. Normally you would have done pigeon with Celine for this. But this is something that moves you through different ranges of movement. Okay, lower your leg down. And then we're gonna open our legs wide. And if your back rounds when you're opening your legs wide, grab the blocks, place them behind you, and sit up onto the blocks. So your, your glutes are on the edge of the blocks. That gives you some height. Make sure that you're really almost about to fall off the blocks. That's the sensation you should have, where you feel your sitting bones are on the blocks. It should be uncomfortable, but not painful. And then roll your thighs in, flex your toes towards you. And if this is your limit, you stay here. And we're here for two minutes. But if you lift up through the heart, and if you want to hinge forward, hinge from the hip crease, lower your fingertips to the ground. But don't bring your head or shoulders forward, take them back. Come down, heart first, head back. So we're going to do everything heart first, head back. So you feel you can come forward? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it? Awesome. No, that's all right. It's just that he was looking at you, so I thought that you could come forward. <laughs> I think if this is your limit, you stay there. <laughs> Don't go any further. So the idea here is just roll your thighs in. Dig your heels into the ground. The more you dig your heels into the ground and you point your toes up, the more that you will release through here, through your adductors. And we've got five seconds to go. So it's not too bad. And then come back. Grab the back of your heels. It's at the back of the knees and bring your heels and the soles of the feet together. So in a diamond shape, or a butterfly, and slowly lean, hinge forward, lowering head and shoulders, allowing your upper body to relax forward. Don't pull yourself, just allow it to relax. It doesn't have to reach anywhere, it doesn't have to go anywhere, it is just a counter pose. On your next inhale, slowly unfurl back to center. Get off the blocks, move them aside, stretch your legs out, and lie down for Savasana. That's it, we're there. So flip your palms to the sky, lie down, and get ready for your final relaxation. I know this is your favorite part, so I'm going to shut up and let you guys relax.
Start moving your hands in circles, moving through the joints. Opening and closing your fists. And slowly let them come to stillness. Point your feet, flex them, release them. Inhale and lift your arms up overhead, lower them down onto the ground next to your head. And as you exhale, release your shoulders, release your back, melt into the ground. Inhale, bend your knees, planting your feet on the ground, giving yourself time and space. And as you exhale, melt through the upper body. Let the ground cradle you. On your next inhale, roll over onto the right side of the body. Using your right arm as a pillow. And as you exhale, let your whole body melt into the ground. Let the ground take your weight. It can do it. It's got your back. On your next inhale, help yourself up to sitting slowly, coming to a comfortable cross-legged position. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Close your eyes. Lift up through the crown of the head and through the heart. And thank yourself for looking after yourself today. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. So, did we get into your glutes? <laughs> <laughs>